Hello everyone and welcome to Alam Shar Weekly. In this lecture, I'll be showing you that how you can animate your shapes in Surf UI. So we will be creating this simple application. You can see there's a square right in the middle of the screen and I can go ahead and click on animate and it animates. Now this square is a custom square or a custom shape that we'll be creating. And you can see that it is doing animations randomly, basically is setting to the random size and it does also reflect the spring animation. So let's go ahead and see that how we can animate shapes in Surf UI. So as you can see that I do have a content view which has a simple text view, text control, and I can go ahead and create a particular shape. Now this will be a custom shape. I will call it square and it will be using the shape protocol. Whenever you're using the shape protocol, you have to provide implementation for the path function. So there we go. And obviously it should return a path. So I'm just gonna copy the path, which is going to create a square for us based on a particular width, which we still have to configure because right now we don't have anything called width. So I'm gonna go over here and I will go ahead and create width, which is going to be a CG float. This means that the person a user can pass a particular width and a square will be created based on that width. If you are unfamiliar with what is this path and all that, then I will add a YouTube in the YouTube description. You can see the link for my previous video, which explains how to draw shapes. Okay, so we have created the square. That's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and see that if we can display the square. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to start using a Z stack. And inside the Z stack, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a square with a particular width. So let's say my width over here is 300. I just want to see the square. Let's go ahead and refresh our UI. And this will allow us to at least see the square. There we go. Right. We can go ahead and fill this. So I can go ahead and say, fill and I can pass in whatever color that I want to fill this particular square. So purple is fine. And I do want the square to be somewhere in the middle, at least on the X axis, I do want it to be somewhere in the middle. So I can go ahead and say size dot width, which is the whole screen size, which we do have to specify and width of the square, which in this case, I believe is 300. So 300 divided by two divided by two in the center and let's say 100. Now this size doesn't really exist. So this size is basically the size of the whole screen. And I can go ahead and create a property called size, which gets a size from UI screen dot main dot bounds. Let's go ahead and build this. And we will also go ahead and refresh this page. So let's go ahead and refresh the preview so that we can see it in the center. You can see that it's not really in the center right now, right? I mean, it's definitely cutting it off. So the reason why is it cutting it off, we have to make sure that we fix those things or else obviously if it's cutting off, not a good idea, right? The problem was nothing actually, we just had to save our file and you can see the same exact code. I don't really like the width to be some sort of a constant number. So it will be a much better idea to state or to use a state to create our width. So there we go. And now I can pass in this particular width over here, width, and this width over here, width. Great. The other thing that we want to do is we want to create some sort of a button so that we can press a button and change the width. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a button. I will call it animate. And the button, I want to put it a little bit differently. So I'm going to say offset. And the only thing I want to set is the Y offset. I'm just going to say 300. So right at the bottom of the screen, that's fine. And now I want to change the width. And if I change the width, I'm assuming that it will change the width of the square. So if I go ahead and say self.width, and I get the width from a random number, 
which you can easily use or create random number using double dot random. Just make sure to convert it to CG float. This is going to give us a random number between 100 and 300. And since this particular width is actually state variable, which is right here, anytime we are going to change the width, it is going to refresh or render the screen again and reflecting the new width. Let's go ahead and run this application. I'm going to press the play button and animate. So it's definitely doing that. Okay. But it's not really animating. I mean, it's just going to the particular size, but it's not really showing us a really nice animation. I can go ahead and create this width animation block which allows you to perform animation on the code which is inside the closure of with animation. So basically all of this code, when it changes, it's going to be performed with animation. So now if I go ahead and run this, I see a little bit of difference, but that's not really the effect that we wanted, right? I mean, it's not 100% correct effect that we wanted. So what is going on? Well, the problem, what is going on is when we use width animation and we set the width, the width is instantly, just the final width is instantly rendered without the animation part of it. Now, the reason that it doesn't take into account the whole animation going from what one width of, let's say 300 to 100 or 100 to 300, is that we did not have a property called animatable data. And animatable data is a property that is going to get called repeatedly based on the values that it is actually returning. So this is going to provide a timeline or different values of the width that you are setting. So if you do want to animate certain object based on the width and you have to go through, let's say if we are increasing the width from 100 to 200, you have to go through all the values, right? 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, till you reach 300. So this animatable data is going to provide you with those missing values, or the values that are going from one animation to the other. So let's go ahead and build that. And we're gonna make sure it builds. Now we can go ahead and refresh our view. Make sure you play, press the play button. Now I will animate it. You can see it's definitely animating and it's going from one particular size to the other in terms of animation. Now this is all good, but what about if we wanted to do a little bit different? We wanted to add a spring animation. Well, the good thing is that with animation does take into account and does take a parameter of animation type. So what we are doing over here is that we are creating the spring animation and you can play around with these different values of response time, the damping fraction and blend duration. And then after you have created, you can pass it as the parameter to the width animation. So now the animation is going to happen using the custom animation that we provide. You can see, there we go. It's more of a springy kind of a behavior, right? But this is completely up to you. Whatever animation that you want to provide, you can definitely provide that. And there we have it. So in this video, you learn about how you can animate shapes using Surf UI.